back. I have another study. This one is not on cancer. This one, it was in Time Magazine again, um, online version, um, of course. <laughs> and it's called, Here's More Proof That Your Dog Really Does Love You. And it's actually based on a study that was done. Um, a paper published in the journal Learning and Behavior. Um, and so I found this very interesting. So I wanted to share it. Okay, so what they did was they set up 34 dog and owner pairs um, around from Minnesota. Um, they just did this locally, it sounds like. The dogs were anywhere from a year and a half to 12 years old. Didn't say how old the owners were. <laughs> they would put each owner in a little room that was closed off from the dog and there was a door. They actually, they showed a video, a short little video online for this. So I'll link that below and you can go to the video and see how they did it. There's this little door and there's glass in the door so the dog can see the owner and the owner is sitting behind the door doing one of a few things and the door is on magnets so the dog can push it open and even the littlest dog can push this door open it's kind of like a doggy door and so what they did was they sat each of the owners in a small room you know one at a time um, closed off from the dog by the door and the door had a, a window that allowed the dogs to see the owners um, fastened by magnets so that the dog could push it open to test how the dogs would respond to suffering, half of the owners were instructed to say the word help in a distressed tone of voice every 15 seconds, making crying noises in between. The other half said help in an emotionless tone and hummed twinkle twinkle little star between words. Then they observed how the dogs responded. Um, they said roughly half of the dogs ended up opening the door, um, but there was no significant difference between dogs who heard their owners crying versus humming. Um, let's see, while the same group, while the same number of dogs in each group opened the door, dogs responding to owner distress did so much faster. Um, Let's see, what did it say? After an average of 23 seconds compared to almost 96 seconds for the humming group. And among the dogs who did open the door, those who scored highly on a separate owner bond test, which involved measuring how much a pet gazed at its person <laughs> during a frustrating situation, tend to open the door quickly, um, signifying that dogs who feel attached to their owners want to help. Now, I find that kind of interesting because um, you know, I don't know how Tucker would respond. <sighs> Tucker, well, he doesn't really like to be in a room by himself. He, you know, he's one of those dogs, he follows me to the bathroom. He, you know, we're in a studio apartment. He follows me to the bathroom. He follows me to the kitchen. He follows me everywhere within the apartment. Um, but at the same time, you know how they tell you if your dog gets off his leash or gets out of the yard, you're supposed to lay on the ground and say, help, help. If I do that, Tucker looks back at me and then continues on his way. There's like not even interest you know what's wrong with her why is she doing that it it he's so following his nose that he just keeps going um so but then again like after his surgery when i went to pick him up um as soon as i opened the door i could hear him whimpering and whining in the background and the receptionist said he started that as soon as you opened the door. He was fine just before you came in, but he heard you, he smelled you, and that was it. 
so, you know, honestly, I don't know how Tucker would react. Um, he may just try to open the door just to get in the room with me, ha having no bearing on whether I'm in distress or not. I, I could probably turn my back on him and not say a word and he'd try and open the door and come in. Um, anyway, so, um, some of this was that dogs want to be with their people. Okay. But they want to be with their people even quicker if the person is crying than if they're humming. And, um, and you know, that's another thing. I take Tucker to the dog park and he's like right by my side the whole time. I have to walk around the dog park to get him to walk around the dog park. I, um, findings also suggest that, let's see, findings also suggest some solace for people whose dogs did not open the door. Um, the dogs in the crying group showed significantly more signs of distress, including pa pacing, panting, whining, than pooches in the control group. So they, they may have been too anxious to or upset to complete the task, which is kind of me when I get into an emergency situation. I can't think. I can't, like, you know, call 911. I'm not capable of that. I'm, I can't think far enough to, to dial 911. So um, that tells us that no one should be concerned if their dog doesn't open the door if they're crying. It might be that they love you too much. <laughs> um, that was a quote from Emily Sanford, a doctoral candidate in psychology at Johns Hopkins University. Um, and she also adds, it stands to reason that dogs would show a range of personality traits just as humans do. Um, so, like, we didn't know that, you know. <laughs> and, um, yeah, so we are not surprised at all to find that there's a range in other species besides our own. So I found that really interesting. Um, you know, like I said, I, I don't know if Tucker would push open that door. He would probably push it open just to be in the same room with me, but I don't know if he would really worry about me if I were in distress. Which is horrible to say. Um, I think somewhere in here, I think it said, oh, if I can find it, I thought, I think it said we all want to think that our dogs, I think I cut it off actually, because I think there was more to this and it said how we all want to think that our dogs care for us and we have the best dogs and um, they would all help us in an emergency. Um, I, I just, I'm not that realistic. <laughs> or I, I'm more realistic, I guess. Um, you know, because I have tried, Tucker has gotten off his leash, he's gotten out of the apartment, and I panic and freak out because I know he follows his nose. He doesn't care about traffic, he doesn't care about anything. Luckily, we're in a, a quiet neighborhood. However, there are cars that do come around the corner without looking for animals. And uh, we have a lot of people walking their dogs and their kids in the, our neighborhood because it's such a family-oriented neighborhood. But there are certain people who don't think about that and they come tearing around the corner. And so I worry about him when he does get off and get out of the apartment, get off his leash and I go running after him and he just runs faster, which is what they tell you, you know, don't run after them because they'll run faster. They think it's a game. And um, I think he runs faster because he just doesn't want to go back into the apartment. You know, he wants a little bit of freedom. And so I've tried that sitting on the ground, laying on the ground, you know, help me, help me. It, you know, maybe he can hear my sarcasm in the, <laughs> but uh, it, it's never worked. And so, but there's also, when I am upset, you know, when I'm truly upset, he sticks to me. He's like right here. Um, he, so, you know, I've always thought he does sense that things are wrong 
and he's there to comfort me. So it could just be that when I'm laying down on the ground out in the on the road, he he knows there's nothing wrong. She's just faking it, so I'll go back. So I'm just gonna keep going. So you know, who knows? Um, you know, there's a part of me that's like, oh, I want to do a study like this, and then there's another part of me that's like, I don't want to put my dog through that. <laughs> I don't want to make my dog miserable. <sighs> so. I don't know. I, I, I will probably never really know. I like to think that he's intuitive to my my feelings and you know if if I would need help that he would be there that um, you know if something happened to me in my apartment he would sit on the balcony and howl for the landlord to come down. I don't know that it would happen but not until he got hungry at least. <laughs> But, so that's the study, and I'll put the link for it down below. If you have any questions or if you want to see more of this kind of stuff, comment down below. Uh, don't forget to like the video, and if you haven't yet, subscribe and hit that bell button wherever it may be. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.